Okay, it's Wednesday, and that means the terrific trio of tri-party MPs are here and all fired up on the day's best issues. Conservative James Rajat is Finance Committee Chair. Megan Leslie is the Deputy Leader of the NDP. And the pride of Cape Breton, Liberal Roger Cousiner. Welcome to you all. You're all starting to look a little tired, just staying up till midnight stuff every I'm night. Tired, yeah. 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 Well, let's move into uh, uh, prostitution. Uh, the law was... Uh, uh, his table just a few minutes ago. Uh, James, you, you might have heard Emily uh, Simons and Kate Shannon uh, before you came on the air. Very strong concerns about this bill. Uh, I wonder if you could address that. It sounds like it, it continues to drive it underground and put the prostitutes at risk and, and sex workers are going to take this back to the Supreme Court by the sounds of it. Well, as you point out, there's very strong views, but there's some very strong views on the other side of people, Canadians, who think that, in fact, you should do everything you can to prohibit it. So. I think Minister McKay has found a good balance with this legislation. Obviously, we'll have Parliament and the Justice Committee will take an in-depth look at it. But it is very challenging. I mean, we know that, um, you know, we know the problems with human trafficking, which uh, have been faced worldwide and, and has affected mm -hmm. here in Canada, something that Joy Smith has worked on very well from our caucus. But this is, it doesn't criminalize, uh, it, as, as you mentioned, it criminalizes one aspect of that. And it also tries to protect communities. It tries to ensure that places where children are likely to be not be sold. So I think he's found a pretty good balance with this legislation and and um, people should be calm. But I think you do find an awful lot of people on the other side as well that say they don't want to, they want to see prostitution completely prohibited mm -hmm. and they want to see both the sale and the purchase of sex criminalized. So Minister McKay, legalized too. Yeah, that's yeah. right. So you have these two very strong views and I think Minister McKay has found a, a good balance with this legislation. Good balance here, Megan, or unbalanced? Well, I mean, it just came out, right? I mean, we're we're having a little. It's hard you to digest think it. Always fast on your feet. Yeah, it, well, it's hard to digest this stuff really quickly. But I don't think if you look at the Bedford decision, you look at the Supreme Court of Canada decision about our current laws. Um, the the decision doesn't say yes, legalize, uh, no, criminalize, no. It it says make sure women aren't killed. Make sure women are safe. That's true. Don't have laws where it puts women at risk of, of violence. So that should be the goal. When we're looking at this bill, that should be the goal. That should be the lens. And I don't think we're there. I mean, we do have to do a, a, a better look at the bill. But there are a couple pieces in here where it's confusing to me. And, and it looks like we are actually are criminalizing sex workers and putting putting them at if risk If they do well. it in a public place where children may be present, and that includes a house where there might be children upstairs. Yeah. So, again, we need a little more time to do this. But if it is putting women at risk, and per perhaps even more risk than our current laws, mm -hmm. uh, then, then, we, then we couldn't support something like this, and it wouldn't have achieved the right balance. Right. Roger? Well, uh, as they both just indicated, you know, it's, it's fresh off the press and hot off the press. Um, uh, we'll look at it. We'll see if uh, we believe it's uh, compliant with the Charter, uh, see if... Uh, uh, if it in fact respects the, the the letter and the spirit of the Supreme Court ruling, and certainly your guests prior uh, threw some concerns in around that, right? Uh, and, and then see what Canadians think about uh, you know obviously public safety, but uh, the protection of women. And uh, as Megan quite eloquently put, uh, uh, you know that was the essence of the Supreme Court ruling. And so it seems like a step backward. Uh, the, Emily Simons, I thought she articulated the, the concerns around it really well, mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, but let's have a grown-up discussion about this, uh, but, but it seems to be a, a step backward. All right. Um, let's go to the Supreme Court. Uh, they, a new justice was appointed yesterday, uh, but the, I found the interesting thing was it was an appointment. This isn't a nomination. There'll be no hearing before MPs. The argument being that uh, Peter McKay says, well, there were leaks around the Mark Nadon appointment, and we, we're, we're, we're concerned about that. Uh, Roger, did, did that serve any useful function when you put the the nominees in front Roger of here or, or Roger sorry over there you James Roger. <laughs> sorry you guys sometimes look a little <laughs> bit alike that's not exactly a matching tie yeah. but anyway I'm I, much taller than okay, Roger you are yeah. oh, yeah. oh no you're not <laughs> well, let's, <laughs> look let's just get to the question yeah. should there be a public vetting process by the MPs when a Supreme Court justice has been nominated James 
Well, and we have put that in place, and in fact, in the past, and I think it's worked relatively well. I think, as Minister McKay, as you pointed out, he's, there were some problems with the last vetting process because there weren't concerns raised during the process. There was concerns raised after the process, so the process did not really fulfill its its role there. I think, frankly, this appointment, I mean, is warmly welcomed by everyone. There's broad mm -hmm. uh, consultation with the government of Quebec, with Canadian Bar Association, and many others. It was warmly welcomed by the Chief Justice as well. So I think it's a very good appointment, and, and it is an executive power, right? It obviously is a, an appointment by the Prime Minister. So I well, think it was a fair, and in fairness, the opposition parties both said that this had to be done uh, pronto. So they were pressuring us to make this appointment very quickly, and so that's what they, exactly what the government did. And I guess lest we forget, Mark Nadal got uh, two thumbs up from all the opposition parties at the last nomination yeah, vetting, I mean, so still, it's usually a rubber stamp anyway. Still a statement, an excellent jurist. From Do you think the it should Justice be done, Reagan? I haven't, I haven't turned my mind to that oh, okay. piece of it, to be honest. I mean, um, I'm, I'm pleased to see this appointment. Uh, this is a, it seemed to be a good process. There seems to be broad consensus. The public piece, you know, when, when that public vetting piece was first introduced, I, my back sort of stiffened thinking, oh my gosh, are we going down the American path? Right, right. It hasn't turned out that way, right? It's been uh, pretty civilized. It's been pretty respectful. Um, very Canadian. Uh, it's been very Canadian. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Um, on the public process here, Gosh, I think that's a really good question, and uh, you haven't turned your mind to it. I haven't turned my mind to it. <laughs> Have you turned your mind to it, Roger? Uh, no, that would be that, that would be a no. But uh, okay, I, this I topic's just, uh, turning into a dud. <laughs> 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 move along. No, no. But I, I just think Canadians say, "Oh no, another Harper appointment." His, I, I don't know if he uses the Toronto Maple Leaf scouting system to you know to draw his oh, appointments or oh. whatever. That's coming from a Leafs fan. <laughs> but uh, you know, usually when there's an appointment made, they say, "Okay, well, you know, what's this one all about?" Or you know, what, what's sort of tricky about this one? But uh, he doesn't have a great track record. Uh, I, I understand the people that I've had an opportunity to speak with that, that know, uh, you know this particular individual, they, they speak highly of him and uh, say it's a good appointment. But uh, again, uh, just the track record on the appointment, say he's... Uh, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad good. he's. I'm, yeah, was exactly. Well, that's good because there was consultation, yeah, right? So yeah, maybe so maybe that is up, sort of an exchange for having the the public peace that we're used to up on Parliament Hill. You know, there actually was yeah. consultation. But, so and, that's and a positive. In fairness, uh, I mean, the past appointments, Justice Rothstein and others, have been warmly regarded by the by the Canadian legal community. So mm -hmm. I think I was thinking more along the appointments of you know Brazo, Walla, <laughs> Duffy. Okay. Okay. You, you First of all, I, I want to defend Leafs Nation against Roger. <laughs> Even though I'm an Edmonton Oilers guy, I will defend Yeah, but against. you haven't seen playoffs for so many years, it's scary. Right. Last year, last year they were in the playoffs. All right. Glenn yeah. Sather at least is doing well for yep. New York. Okay. Moving along, I, I, I want to explain to our viewers why Megan, so woolly brained on this on this on these topics because you're staying up really really late <laughs> every night in the House of Commons. They're going past midnight. I saw an adjournment at quarter to one a.m. Yeah. I, I guess people might not care if the House is sitting or not this late. But is this really a productive way of doing the people's work? Megan, it's try, try, you know. No. Why, well, what and you why'd you agree nail, to do it? You hit the nail. We didn't agree to do it. Oh, you guys did it. Yeah, this has uh, been rammed down our throats. Uh, you hit the nail on the head when you said we're woolly brained, <laughs> right? We, we're they're very busy days here. We are going from topic to topic. We are doing votes. We are at committee. They're really intense days. We're sitting till midnight. I'm happy to do work, right? But when we sit till midnight, starting before the beginning of June. We're just getting, we're getting silly, right? It doesn't look good on any of us. We're making <laughs> mistakes. Our tempers are starting to flare. I can't stand the sight of my own caucus. <laughs> Never mind these guys. <laughs> it's, like, it's just starting to wear on us. And I don't think it is very productive. And I will point out that we have a signed speaking order in the House of Commons, right? It's like, okay, we'll go conservative, liberal, new Democrat. We do it that way. Well, the conservatives and liberals are not taking their speaking spots. It's the NDP speaking. They don't right? show up? They're, well, I, they're probably there, uh, but they're not taking their speaking opportunities. So what kind of a debate is that? Why are we sitting till midnight? Well, why are you sitting till midnight, and why aren't you guys it's taking sort of your the, taking speaking sort of the spots? same approach I used to take uh, during the exam week at St. of X. Uh, that maybe that explains why I wasn't on the dean's list. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Can you explain that it, analogy a little more? <laughs> it, it, you know, it, it's a, an incredible 
waste of, of time and resources and uh, it, we, we see this every every year uh, stick a fork in this you know in this session it, it's done so um, you know I would hope the house leaders get together and say you know enough's enough uh, people's nerves are raw and coffee can only do so much yeah. so uh, you know let's let, let's get on with it and let's get back to our ridings and, and see your constituents get that lobster you know surplus just minish I'm going to do my best to I'm going to do my best about that this weekend so <laughs> All right. Help us, James. Help, Help us. It. Help him, James. I, I, I just have to crack the record. Conservatives are taking their spots. I'll be uh, addressing the House tonight at 10 p.m. I know all your listeners will be watching. Oh, the, we'll uh, make Reverend sure we carry it live. On the, uh, still plenty <laughs> still of good seats, seats available. available. Yeah. <laughs> Free pass to the gallery. But, I mean, we're doing the budget bill, so we do have legislation we have to pass. The budget bill, obviously, is the prom legislation. We finished that at midnight last Thursday at the Finance Committee, so we have 20 hours extra of debate. I mean, uh, to your point, I mean, I take the valid point, if we could get more agreement amongst the parties in the sense of, yes, yeah, the Canada Honduras, let's not have 60 hours of debate, let's have two and get that through the House. But and then James, let's have look, more my BlackBerry is going off because we have votes right now. We have to go back up I for know. votes because the Conservatives, your party has moved closure. But, the, but there's a reason for that. You take our Parliament, you compare it to Westminster's Parliament. In the Westminster Parliament, second reading debate takes a day, maybe two. It, third reading debate takes an hour. In this place, you can have second or third reading debate forever, and there's no things such as you have to actually be present to listen to the other parts of the debate to participate in the debate. Mm -hmm. Like it, This goes back to bugbear of mine personally, which is we need to change the rules the way the House of Commons functions to make it much more reasonable, to make the debates much more meaningful, and to move legislation quicker to committees so that the House time, which is very valuable to the government, we can actually spend on the proper things. And frankly, I think you'd find some broad consensus across parties for that. I hope you would. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, you go along with that? Absolutely. <laughs> Some, some, he's one, the he's idea, one of the more, the more sensible ones over there, so, yeah. you know, he's, don't, okay. don't take the temperature. I just, I just love these backhanded compliments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're one of the best in a bad lottery. Come on. <laughs> well, apparently you do have to go vote. Uh, you do. are getting called back, so uh, we appreciate okay. you coming all the way to the studio, but, you know, get back. Get back there and yeah, vote, no, and uh, we'll hopefully see you next week. We're getting in the CTV. You think we're going to be here apparently. next week? Are we going to be here a week from now, do you think? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah? yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Well, bad for you. Sorry, Megan. <laughs> All right. Have, have a good time. Get some sleep, Megan, and uh, stop dreading seeing your own. <laughs> I know. Metaphorically <laughs> speaking. Coming up, the